Welcome to my cutting patch. It's been a couple of weeks since I've been live. Um, we've been away. So back home now and I'm wanting to make progress on my flower garden. So if you're joining me live, please leave me the hashtag live. And if you're watching on replay, catch up later on today, next week, next month, leave me the hashtag replay and I'll catch up with you in the comments. Spoiler alert, you know me as Julie Davis, the florist that teaches. I am not a gardener. I'm not really interested in gardening, but because we've had some clearance work done up the side of our garden, I thought it would be a nice opportunity for me to actually grow some flowers so that when I teach my flower arranging class, I can use things I've grown out of my garden rather than going to the supermarket. So I have decided that I'm going to use the no dig method, primarily because I don't like digging. I'm too lazy to dig. Now I thought that meant that I could just plant my stuff into the garden, but no. And those of you who know anything about gardening will be shouting at me now. So I would appreciate it. If you've got helpful, useful tips and comments, please do leave them in the comments. I am a 100% novice gardener. My husband does the gardening. I go around and cut the flowers and arrange them indoors. So as it happens, I don't think I quite understood the no-dig gardening, that it wasn't just the lazy way of doing the gardening. The no-dig gardening is, I think, it's, you don't want to be tearing the soil because you're destroying the soil structure, but you have to um, condition the soil. And the way you do that is to put a layer of mulch. I've got really, really well-rotted compost from our compost heap. And for about 10 centimetres deep, and then you let the worms do their thing. So where does the planting of the flowers come into it? So I have been out and bought some flowers today. We have um, a, a street market in, in Faversham, um, Tuesdays, Fridays and Saturdays, there's always a plant store. So I was in town this morning and I thought, I'm just gonna see what's on the plant store. And I have bought myself some things. So I thought I was doing a really good job because I actually stopped and read the plant labels. So bearing in mind I'm a 100% total novice, I know that my garden is west facing, but it gets a lot of sun. It doesn't get morning sun, it gets a lot of sun in the evenings. So I have tried to do my best and pick things select things i think i've got a good chance of going in my garden so delphiniums it says magic fountains now is that the variety of delphinium or is that like a common name of delphinium i just know delphiniums as delphinium so it says here actually delphinium elatum mark magic fountains dark blue with a white bee a white bee is that the little white dot inside the little florette that looks like a bee so it says light full sun and now everything I've got says full sun. So before I go any further, <laughs> I'll show you what I bought. So I've got some delphiniums. I've got some Cosmos Sonata mix. And the mix is, I think they are white, light pink and dark pink. And it says plant in sun in fertile, moist soil. And then I've also got another spiky flower. This is Physostegia and the variety Crystal Peak White. So it looks a little bit like a sort of snapdragon, like that. I don't know how you say that. But that also needs to be in full sun. So my sister popped down today and once she'd finished laughing at what I was doing, and I think probably telling me exactly what my husband had been telling me, she said, there's no point in doing this, Julie, because your flowers that you've chosen are coming to the end of their season and they're just not going to do anything. And she says, in actual fact, I think you're wasting your money. <laughs> I've bought the plants. They're just going to live for, you know, 
a little short while and then they're just going to die because your soil isn't up to scratch yet. So it was quite interesting because she knows more about gardening than I do. I said, well, will you come to the local plant nursery? Because I said they were, had a sale on. Was it 50% sale for the perennials, which I know the perennials are the ones you plant and then they continue flowering. I keep having to ask what the definition of all the you know, annuals, perennials are. And um, as it happened, I bought two perennials in the sale. I will have to reach over and show you what they are. And then I bought a couple of other things as well. So today I've spent about £30 on plants, 15 at the market and about 15 at the nursery. I got loads more from the market than I did at the nursery. But she was quite helpful in deciphering what was in the back of the card. So she also said to me, do you know what your soil type is, Julie? So I said, it was normal. And she said, well, you can get soil testing kits. And I said, I can't really be bothered with all that stuff. I just want to plant the plants and be able to go around the garden and cut them and then arrange them indoors. Hence why you see that I am not a natural gardener. But it was quite helpful because she did take a little bit of time to give me some advice. And in fact, I've had quite a lot of advice from you, the viewers, on Instagram. So if you don't already follow me on Instagram, I'm at Flower Start. Seems rather apt, doesn't it? With an underscore at the end. The link's to that in the description underneath the video. And also several of you have commented on my previous videos. So the, the advice I've gleaned so far is that, you know, no dig gardening, a good thing. And that if I'm buying potted plants to make sure I'm not buying dwarf varieties, because I did see a potted dahlia in the supermarket. And that was a really good tip because of course, if I'm going to be flower aging, I want long stems to arrange with, not little short ones. And then the other little bit of advice I got was not to plant in single color. So I guess if you were designing your garden to enjoy as a whole garden, you would be buying in odd numbers, your threes and your fives and your sevens, you'd be planting in clumps and you'd probably have decided what your color palette was going to be. So, Unless I want to make flower arrangements, there are only ever going to be all white or all pink or all pink and purple. I need to have a bit more variety. So that was a really good tip that I need to have more variety. This is going to be a cutting garden, a working garden, a flower patch. It's not part of the wider, more harmonious looking garden. It's a working part of it. So I'm taking all that on board. So that is why I've gone for, I've gone for a variety of things. I've gone for the delphiniums, I've gone for the cosmos, which are pink and white and dark pink. I've gone for the physostegia in white. I've got some little flat, some more, actually I've got two lots of cosmos, have I? No, I haven't got two lots of cosmos. I'm confusing myself, but I've got a few other bits and pieces. And I've also got some plants that my husband's been growing in window boxes, growing on the seeds, he's done the nurturing. And I think they are pot marigolds or calendula, one and the same thing, and also some zinnias. And a lot of them have been nibbled by the slugs. But my helpful bit of advice from my sister when she took me to the garden centre, she said, of course, you need to know what your, what your aspect is. You know, are you shade or part sun, full sun? What your soil conditions are? And she said, you also need to look at when the plant's going to flower. And um, I just thought if I bought things that had plenty of buds on them, they would flower and then they would be good to go. But she said that when I'm looking at the labels of the plants I've already bought, this said it flowers in June to September. So we're in July now. So I'm only going to get colour in August and September. And this, the cosmos just says summer. So presumably that's still September as well. And my delphinium says June to August. So we're right in the middle towards the end of July now. And August is just around the corner, so I could understand more. So I likely need somebody to translate what the information on these little plant cards actually means. So she was saying, really, to get value for money, I should be looking for plants that had a flowering season until October because being in July, the summer season started in June and I'm, I'm just coming in part way through the season. Hence, she said, why the nursery has got a perennial sale because you're too far down the season. You know, most of the life of the flower has already happened. There's just one way they're just gonna 
you know, die back and you'll have to wait until next year. So her advice was I should be concentrating on conditioning my soil in order that I was all set and ready to go for next year. But of course, I wanted to do it now. I wanted my garden instantly. I'm so used to going to the supermarket, the florist, to other, you know, to flower farmers, where you just go in and you cut it all and you've got it and it's all instant. And I think that's probably another reason why I don't like gardening is it's just the delay. And I've said that I'm not interested in nurturing um, seeds and, and all that kind of thing. I just want an instant garden. So that is where I am at the moment. So I, I think I have a little more understanding about the plant name cards. I have slightly more understanding about the no dig method. And the upshot of it all is, is that the little patch that I've got here, which I thought I was going to just miraculously, you know, when you watch the gardening programs and they just put everything straight in the soil, in the, in the soil. So it's not going to be this miraculous finish. What I need to do is, I need to give 10 centimeters of my mulch, my really well rotted compost from the compost heap in the garden about 10 centimeters deep throughout my little patch here thank goodness my garden has shrunk in size for the early videos in this garden series i was telling you how it was about 10 meters long by about three meters wide so i am dealing purely with this little patch here so the the japanese anemone you can see is outside of my area so it's approximately two meters by two meters i have filled a wheelbarrow up full of the mulch and again, another reason why I'm not a gardener. It is physically hard work. So I have this, in you know, a shovel. First of all, getting the wheelbarrow out, take, wheeling it round to where the compost heap was, getting the shovel and, you know, digging it and I couldn't get it close enough to the compost heap. So I was just sort of doing that throwing thing and hoping that it was um, making it into, into the wheelbarrow. So I've got that there. And then my sister said, well, why don't you what you ought to do if you want this instant color you need to think about your plants in your garden as being um you know indoor pot plants it doesn't she didn't mean take them indoors but as if you know um when you do a hanging basket or or you've got planted tubs on your patio or something like that, she says what you need to do is to plant them up into your pots so they've got a chance to, you know, to grow and get established and all the rest of it. And you'll have really good quality soil in there. I'm going to use a mix of my compost and also um, a purchased compost as well. So her recommendation was you need the extra nutrients in the compost. She is a font of all information. And I, I think she could see me slightly glazing over following instructions. <laughs> I'm starting to feel like it, what it must be like. Perhaps if you come to a flower class where everything I say of course I've done it a million times before and and to you my students in the class are probably thinking I have not got a clue what she's talking about so learning experience is very good especially when you're a teacher because it makes you realize what it's like when you've got zero knowledge and you need to be able to you know build on that zero plate and, and then become more knowledgeable in what you're doing so I am going to the the, the task by the end of today, it's going, not going to be a video of hours and hours long, but by the end of the day, my goal is to have my mulch covered. Now, I'm just looking at what's in my wheelbarrow. I think I probably need at least three more wheelbarrows worth. Oh, goodness me. And, and I'm going to have some containers. So I've gone around the garden trying to find containers. So I found this huge plastic container. It looks a little bit like terracotta. I've got some things, flower arranging containers. Now, these are going full circle. I have got this lovely, what looks appears to be a metal, rusty metal container, which is reasonably heavy, but actually it's really lightweight. I think it was a plastic container that somebody had applied um, a sort of rusty finish to it. And I did use it for flower arranging. And then I stopped doing flower arranging demonstrations. I was um, a trained demonstrator for the Kent area of the NAFAS, the National Association of Flower Arrangement Societies. And I hung up my demonstration tools and then my husband sort of took on the containers that I had. So I have, I'm claiming this back. This has got a mint in it, a nepata. Nepata is a herbaceous perennial I'm reading in the little ticket here. Six Hills Giant. It's got a bit leggy, so I thought I could make use of that. And then I've got a number of containers. So what I'm going to do today is to, to um, 
get my containers sorted out. So I'm going to use this as a mixing bowl and then going down to my compost. So I've, I've um, my husband has some little seed trays that he hadn't used and I think he's put, is this vermiculite? My sister says something about putting something in to help with drainage. So I'm using this as a mixing bowl. So with my well rotted compost, I don't know what the um, relationship is. I've got bits of stuff that he's throwing away there. So a bit of this and then a bit of my compost and I'm going to mix it together and then I've also, as you can see here, I've gone round in the garden shed collecting the crocs so that I can pack those in the bottom of the containers in order that um, the soil doesn't become waterlogged, it has somewhere to drain down into. And then what I'm going to do as well is with my compost here, oops, is to tip some of that in as well and mix it all together. <laughs> so if your name's Monty Don, you'll probably be turning in your grave in um, utter disgust about what I'm doing. So I guess if I actually knew what I was doing, I think the problem is, you know, I've watched my husband garden over years and I don't think you can have two experts in one house. Um, so I kind of know what to do, but it's the detail of, of what to do, which is putting me off. And just the short, the hard labour and the slog, really. So it looks like that, mixed together a little bit. And then deciding which containers I'm going to put this into. So I've got this pot here, this little brass pot that I bought from a flower arranging sale. Can you hear that? It's got well and truly waterlogged. And I had some spring flowering bulbs in which I thought, oh, if I kept the bulbs, they were just, you know, I've got ahead of myself. So I think what I need to do is try and I'm going to have a little compost bucket here. Sort through this bucket and then take, you know, take out what I can salvage. Save my bulbs and then I can plant those in the autumn time. Okay, I've got crocs in there as well. So I did try and do the right thing. This, has, this metal container doesn't have a hole in the bottom. So it'd be interesting to see whether it did get too waterlogged. And I've got gravel in here. Oh, I sort of top dressing from something else. I don't know whether these are salvageable, but I guess I need to give it a go rather than just binning the whole lot. Oh, there's so much, um, <laughs> so much water in here. I've got bits of moss in here. My gloves aren't waterproof. They're just caution. I'm just trying to protect my manicure. Those gardening and manicure doesn't quite go together. So, ugh. So I've saved what, you know, made an effort to think about saving this. I think I'm going to tip that just straight out onto the soil there. So I've got an empty container. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm trying to think my crocs in there just to lift the roots out. What am I actually going to plant in here? So I'm going to create, my sister said, just go for it. I said, do they have to have like a certain size pot to grow in it? And she said, well, it's not, it's sort of a bit like potting on when you get progressively bigger pots. But she said, I'll just cram them in so that their roots can establish. And then she said I can either keep them in the pots over winter, we don't have a greenhouse, or she said, you know, come the planting season, November onwards, I could then, hopefully my soil will have loosened up a bit because of the mulch, I can then plant them direct into the soil. So next in is my compost. And then, shall we go for something imposing? So the my delphiniums. They look nice, really pretty. So I'm going to try and what I thought I'd do as well is sort of make a note of what I'm doing. 
just so I can sort of learn from my mistakes. So it's got lots of root growth here and you're supposed to tease the roots out. I mean, how much do you tease them out? I'm, and I'm teasing, but am I pulling? Am I damaging them? You don't quite know what it is. Or is it just a matter of, you know, massaging the roots out? Let me know in the comments. What would you do? Is it just, it just a little... Is that enough? Make a hole. Now oh, that crock there is not giving me a deep enough hole to put this in. So I have to bury it. I have to um, make sure that the top surface of the soil that was in the pot is level with the top surface of the soil in the container. Am I going to add something else around that? I don't know, I think I might just have a delphinium in it because the pot isn't particularly deep. So it's just about making a start really. And I can try and convince my rather sceptical other half that although I might not know what I'm doing, I have got enough enthusiasm to sort of see the project through. So I don't want to fill it, yeah, I've got to get it just right. I've got to get it level with the container, but I need, for watering purposes, and these will need to be watered in, um, I need to have somewhere for the water to collect. So I'm making sure that the soil is below the ridge of the container. So is that flower potted, number one? Right then move that out of the way so the next thing to do i've got this fancy container as well Oops. so this is again lightweight plastic still got the price on it 14.99 that was a really good flower engine container with one of those black shallow dishes that rests on the edge and then in the days when i use flower foam block there so this has actually got a drainage hole at the bottom but it's got a sort of quite a big well as well so I'd, I'm going to try and cover up that hole as much as I can because I don't want all the water just going straight down to the bottom and coming out of the bottom of the pot and then soil so in this one how about some of the Cosmos? So I bought four pots of Cosmos. They were £1.50 each. Or if I got four, they were £5. It's all about doing your mental arithmetic, isn't it? So nice and bushy. A little bit pot bound. So squeeze the old pot. Oops. Hope I don't, you know all the wrong way. Is there a knack to doing this? Perhaps a pair of scissors would have helped to just cut the pot away. And do you save your pots? Or is it one of those things that just sort of grows, like, you know, collecting plastic bags? So is that right? Just sort of pull it away? So I reckon if I'm talking about packing things in, I might be able to get two more in here yeah. oh gosh this is difficult and I haven't got my scissors with me I don't want to sort of <laughs> pull the stem off or should I just pull at the roots get rid of the roots here is that too cruel and mean oh don't do that Gosh, it's again, this is why I don't like gardening. I can't even get the plants out of the containers. So having pulled those roots there, again, is that, is that what you do when you tease the roots out? It's just a total different language to me. I really do not, um, you know, all that technical jargon. And then the third one. So my sister said to me, she was quite shocked when I picked up my plants and 
I just picked up a single one. No, I think I picked up two. And I said, well, I knew I didn't just want one, but I, I knew that I could see this sort of shadow move across her face. And I was thinking, but the thing is, I'm not planting a garden. I'm planting for cutting. So I don't need to have things in that, you know, the accepted form. It's, it's for me to cut the flowers. And, I, and one thing I'll need to decide is how I'm going to, um, you know, when I come to put these in the ground at the end of the autumn, it's, you know, do I want to grow them in lines or do I sort of grow them as if they were, you know, more garden style planting? Or am I going to go full on allotment or a, more of a garden, informal garden style planting? So what, again, what would you do? I'm just all questions. There's no answers. I'm just all, all the questions, all the gear and, and no idea, as my sister says. So I do know that I need to water these in. So I'm going to do that when I have finished. So, you know, the start. And then, what I do want to make sure I do, the zinnias that my husband's been growing, so I'll do the pot marigolds first, sort of have a huge show with them. So this is the, the mint, the Six Hills Giant. So I'm just going to you know, double check my husband got everything right. Cat mint, suitable for borders and rose gardens as ground cover. And containers, well, I'll get a tick for a container, in the sun and well-drained soils. And so this flowering is late spring to late summer, so that is the... Well, again, that's only September, isn't it? Because autumn's definitely October start. Water well before planting and until established. Trim after a flowering to encourage repeat growth. But the thing has happened, it's been on my patio. And although we've got a south-facing garden, it's slightly starved of, of sunshine. So I thought what I would do is, can I lift that out? And um, I'll probably pop this on. I've actually got oregano in here too. So I'm probably going to sort of dump that there. And then I can put my nice stuff in here. Well, that sort of decorative element. So some crocs at the bottom. And then fill up with compost. I need quite a lot of compost to bring it closer to the surface. And then I'm going to go through the window box and plant in the zinnias. So the zinnias, um, my husband's done all the right things with them, but we have loads and loads of slugs. You can see, that's the zinnias. So I think that's just going to get trashed. Well, you know, dumped, dumped in the garden, in the compost bin. And... I've got a tray of half, well, about three half decent ones in here. And then I've got another window box full of them just down here. Oh, I said I was going to do marigolds. Oh, let's do the marigolds. So I've got more of those and they look a bit healthier. So here, marigold in flower with a borage at the other end. So I'm going to put those on there. And then this window box here, I've got, I think I've got a daisy growing. Forget-me-nots, um, ragwort, a tomato, some sort of shrub, and feverfew. It's sort of a bit of an odd combination. Let me put that one down there. And then this one here. So I just need to lift these up oops how do you get in to do it so i have got a trowel over here look i was uh, optimistic and just thinking a trug would be enough for my ground cover so a bit like taking a cake out of the cake tin and i can just, i'm just imagining you're rolling your eyes here why can't she manage to do this? And this is why I don't like gardening. It's just too much out of my comfort zone. I can't get my hand in. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, oh. So it looks like 
looks like I've got some good root growth. And then pack them in. I think I might need a bit more soil. Oops. And then probably I will um, finish off at my leisure. Having started the job, you're my accountability partner. I've started it together and I will just have to sit here, stand here and do my homework before I do anything else. I'm starting to understand as well, my husband is punctilious about what goes into the compost heap. I think that, oh, I know what that was. Coffee bag. He did say the coffee bags didn't rot down and he was right, darn it. So, there's probably an accepted way, you know, how far apart to plant these, but I'm just going for the, the mass effect. These are a bit dry, but I will water them in, so don't worry. So I'm make a little hole with my fingers, pushing it in, firming it in, so that they sit at the same level they were sitting in the window box. Oh, it's just starting to rain, spitting a little bit. So this would look quite nice if it works. <laughs> because um, I've got my rusty container in the brown and then the bright orange pot marigolds. It could be quite a, a winning, colourful combination. Little leaves there as well. There's a bit of a yellow on the... Um, on these leaves here. So does that mean that they are dying or are they lacking in some nutrient? Not sure if you're able to share your wisdom with me, I would appreciate it. A bit yellowy on the leaves, what does that mean? So I can see here, that this is going to take me quite some time. So my, my hope for instant gardening, <laughs> my instant gratification, you can see now why I love going to the charity shop so much, because you get that instant hit of gratification when you find something that you want to buy. Whereas here, I'm in it for the long haul. In flower. I reckon after this one I can get one more in. And then I will have a think about the next pot that I've got going. But I suspect probably I will do all that off camera. So I've made a start. What do you reckon? <laughs> Honestly, I think I deserve <laughs> a round of applause. You know, it's like what they say, isn't it? You can't, you know, oh, there must be loads of sayings, aren't there? I, what are they? You know, it's like when you go running, you know, at least I didn't sit on the couch. I may have been the slowest runner in the team, but at least I wasn't sitting on the couch. I have started off on my run. And <laughs> this is the beginning of my garden. So I've now got two pots planted up. I'm going to plant everything else up. I'm going to empty the compost out of the, the seed trays that you know, didn't work, recycle everything a little bit. I am then going to move these onto the steps in order that I can mulch, in order that I can then put the pots back. So at least as I stand looking out from my kitchen window, I will see progress. And I think that's the name of the game, isn't it? You want to make a start to begin with and you want to see progress. So that is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to heed my husband's advice and I'm going to heed my sister's advice. And of course, my lovely viewers, I will be heeding your advice as well. If you've got, if you haven't fallen over, you know, laughing. Um, I'm sure that many of you are far more green fingered than I am. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a 
the blind leading the blind, so to speak. So I'm going to leave it there now. And thank you so much for joining me. Um, normally I do summer holidays, so things are a bit awry in terms of my programme of what I'm doing. I normally do a Facebook Live at 12 o'clock from my kitchen sink. And um, I won't be doing it at 12 o'clock today because I've got visitors on Friday because I've got visitors. So probably, I reckon, if we say 9 o'clock on Friday, I'm sure my visitors won't have got up then. So we'll have a catch-up on my Facebook group, which is Flower Start World, which, again, you will find, you can either search for it direct on Facebook or click the link in the description underneath the video. And if you've enjoyed, if you found some scintilla of amusement and entertainment watching a novice gardener try and get to get gardening, do subscribe to my channel and then you'll be able to follow along and um, have a right old laugh at the mistakes that I'm making. And better still, if you are into your flowers and um, you want to see what bit of what goes on behind the scenes here and day trips out that I'm taking here in the countryside, why don't you join my special YouTube membership group and you'll find a link for that. Um, you can do it two ways. This join when I look at my phone there's a join button next to the subscribe button, but also if you click the down arrow underneath the video where the title is it, uh, lots of description lots of text will open up and you'll be able to find the link and you can just click on that link and then youtube will do all the other magic about telling you how to pay to join the group so i'm going to say goodbye and i will catch up with you same time same place next week and hopefully i'll be able to show you that my plants haven't died and they'll be one week old in my company so i'll just say goodbye for now and i'll see you again next time <laughs>